Okay, dear participants, thanks all of you and uh, and good afternoon. Uh, so today our uh, webinar basically uh, WCN 07, day two. Uh, yesterday our topics was EIGRP routing dynamic routing protocol and today also the dynamic routing protocol OSPF, open shortest path fast. So now, uh, and our instructor Sam, uh, just, uh, yesterday as uh, Sam dot uh, Nozul Islam. Uh, so now I'd like to request uh, Nozul Islam to conduct the today's seminar. Okay, I think you can start now. Oh, thank and you, sir. If, oh. Okay, just okay. if, uh, dear Patrick, if you have any question, uh, you can uh, write down in question answer box. So if we will allow in uh, uh, your microphone, it's uh, uh, take time because uh, today also many topics. So uh, you can write down the question answer box. So we will pass your question to our instructor. Okay, you can continue now. Okay, thank you, sir. Good afternoon. Uh, thank you all for joining us today. So as uh, sir said, uh, today's topic is OSPF. So it's a uh, op uh, we know that uh, OSPF is uh, one of the IGP. Uh, it's a uh, uh, link estate routing protocol, right? So actually, uh, why uh, we need the OSP, whereas we have the RIP and we have the EAJRP. Yeah. We discussed EAJRP in um, our last webinar. So what's the reason actually we need the OSP? Uh, Oops. Also, basically, uh, you know, the OSP is a link state routing protocol. So it looks like a uh, thing state routing, all the link state routing protocol look like our navigation system. If you are using the Google Map um, uh, or other navigation system, uh, also. So uh, how actually it works? Like uh, uh, in navigation system, uh, system all the map all on the database over there the navigation system can identify the, which one is the shortest path for the destination so linguist routing flow protocol is uh, look like this uh, so he has all the path on the database of the link and uh, he find the shortest path using the STF algorithm, which is called the shortest path first. Uh, this algorithm actually, uh, uh, I mean, the address in 70s, but OSPF uh, invented um, more like 1980s. But uh, why actually OSPF come to the picture? Like uh, others, uh, linguistic, uh, uh, I mean, the distance vector routing protocol with EAJRP, there is some limitation on that part. But uh, in OSTF, we uh, overcome that part. So, uh, this cool, uh, you know, all the different path you have in your database, and uh, you don't, uh, I mean, uh, it's impossible to get a look since you have everything on your database, right? In the downside, uh, if you have all the database uh, in your database, and when you will search for uh, any of uh, our destination, then the CPO in the, uh, C, uh, more CP is required when you search for uh, when your database is uh, bigger, right? So uh, I will discuss it uh, all the things one by one. So this is OSPF in short, what actually OSPF is. So as we know, uh, OSPF uses a uh, link estate advertisement uh, that in short is called the LSA. So I'll discuss it, it more later, but for the um, timing, you just remember the term LSA. Uh, LSA actually used for neighborship and other things, sorry.
just doing it my first series. Please bear with me. My pain is not working. Sorry, I'm stopping my um, skin sharing. Please wait for a while. Sorry, it's the working. Uh, I have to test it another way. Sorry guys. So uh, as I said, uh, the uh, link is to use the LSA for uh, shared the routing information with his neighbors. So uh, just need to remember these things. I will discuss it more later. So uh, this is the LSA. And uh, it's a link state protocol as said and uses the uh, SPF shortest path first algorithm to calculate his base path and uh, hop count is unlimited like uh, others uh, where EAJRP and others have has a limited hop count right and metric for calculating uh, the base path uses metric is cost uh, as we know the EAJRP uses bandwidth 
delay load and the reliability and other things. And our administrative distance of the OSP is 110. And it's a classless routing protocol. And what is classless routing protocol? Actually, when it's sending the update information to its neighbors, it's also sending the subnet bus along with the IP address, which is actually uh, look like the DLSM um, virtual length subnetting bus 7C header supported. So, and also yesterday we all see uh, that the uh, EJP uh, can do equal and um, not equal load balancing, whereas the escape uh, do the equal cost uh, load balancing. And another thing I uh, introduced in uh, OSPF that is the area. We will discuss it more uh, in later slide. And there is something uh, when we configure the OSPF, it supports uh, many um, hierarchical uh, OA. Uh, we can design the topology in many hierarchical OA. But the thing is, we have to remember when we configure the OSPF area, all other area must be connected with the area zero, which is called the backbone area. We will discuss it more about this in later slide. Uh, like uh, EHRP and other distance vector routing protocol, it support the uh, authentication and multicast group used for sending the hello packets is uh, uses um sending a hello packet or update packet uses a uh, multicast ip address 224.0.0.5 and uh convergence is faster than other uh, link, uh, link uh, distance vector routing protocol so uh, it's a sh uh, very short overview of the osp like and if we see the other things like OSPF. Uh, so what actually OSPF working? We have to remember, uh, we have to understand that how actually OSPF is. We know it's called link state. What is link? It's link is nothing, it's just about or the interface of the router. So if you see uh, in the first uh, picture in a slide, that is, uh, we have a three router, dot R1, uh, like R2 and R3. So uh, what LSA is, or, or what link state is? Link state means link means uh, the interface of the router. That means uh, this is one link and this is another link. So this is actually the link of the link state. And what is the state means? State means uh, the description of the interface. Actually, what is the uh, cost or what is the metric to reaching you know, the neighbor? Description of this interface. If we just segregated uh, this thing is it. So uh, this is the short. And how actually we escape this link state or all the link state routing protocol like escape is sending the LSA. LSA means uh, already said link state advertisement. When uh, any router like R1 found the LSA from R2 and uh, from the R3, he actually build the LSDB. LSDB means link state database. Basically, all the link state advertisement or LSA or piece of the puzzle look like, right? When we are building, we just uh, building, uh, we are just uh, saving the LSA information in our database. So, see, uh, in right side, uh, if we have three uh, routers, connected then in lsdb you will have the three lsa in your database we'll check that in later but just for now you have to remember that link means uh, the interface of the router state means the description of the link that is connected to the neighbor and all the lsa that is uh, coming from others router will save in uh, OSPF lsdb 
Now, see if you see the uh, in lift of uh, image, right? On the routers is connected uh, in one switch. So, like if you have a lots of USB routers, it might be very, if uh, might not be efficient when you are sending all the LSA to each other, right? So, uh, so in that you are you have eight routers in your network and all are connected through a switch. What will happen actually? When you have to configure the OSP, that means you have to send the LSA in all the routers, right? That means all the LSA is, uh, is sending to each other to for uh, is, uh, adjacency or uh, sending the update information to the neighbors, right? then how actually uh, topology will be look like it will be look like this one right so what will happen actually all the OSP router will be connected to the all the routers and will send all um, LSA all the in all the OSP neighbors then it's actually the overhead right all the uh, routers are sending the LSA to all the routers that actually when it's needed or not needed so is that efficient no so how actually we can uh, avoid such kind of situation in when we are uh, configuring or when OSP is working so in the, uh, in that scenario so what OSP actually do is is actually create a router all the other routers sending the LSA to him like this way all the others router sending the LSA to this router in OSPF uses something called dear for such, uh, such kind of situation in multi access network, right? So, DR means the designated router. In this, when we, um, when our all the routers connected to the multi access network, then they created a router where they will send all the LSA. And DR will send others information to their routers. I mean, uh, if you think R1, R2, R3, R4, R5, R6, R7, and this is R8. If R8 is the dear, then all other router send his routing information or update information into dear, and dear will share all the LSA to other router. In this way, we are just reducing the LSA packet in our multi-access network. What happened if other DR will will fail? It, it, it can happen right any day. So what OSP does? It actually create another router. It's called the BDR. So one is DR. This is called designated router. Another one, this is called the BDR. So, when uh, other router will send the LSA, he will, uh, they actually send the LSA to, into two routers. One is DR, another one is BDR. That's why you are seeing all other router connected to the DR and BDR. So, then if you have more than 100 routers, you just created the neighborship with dear and the bdr with the full adjacency but other uh, router will showing a dear other but you will not share the dvd with the others router so in this way of uh, the osp is work right so, so if you have all other things like lsdb then you can 
think uh, that you have all the information of a city like like the in our navigation system say if you have all the information in whole country it's a very difficult or it's time consuming to uh, find out the shortest path uh, to one to another or city right but when you have uh, when you are calculating like uh, one city map then it's a uh, very easier for you and also for the voice people voice people like working this way right so in this way like uh, you have all the lsa in your lsdb then you can easily identify how actually you go to the destination network so there is um, uh, no way to occur a loop in your network because you have all the information how you can go and how you actually find out the shortest path is based on your uh, metric in osp we know that uh, you uses the cost is a metric to find out the shortest path so then uh, if you think uh, that you have uh, more than 100 routers then what actually will happen in osp so it's a big chunk of the database right when you uh, when anything changes on any router all the lsa will send but if you um, yeah if you like a multi-access network you will send into the only two routers but if you are not connected with the multi-access network all our point-to-point -point routers then what will happen all the routers in one group then you are sending all the information to others router just think about you are um all the area all um, all the router are in single area like area zero then what will happen if anything changes on head of face router then all the information will passes through the other router called all are belongs to the same area then actually the concept coming in the area so area actually are uh, the grouping of the routers that means like you are grouping some of the branch routers in here in here and also in here so what actually will happen when you are segregating the uh, one big group to a small group so it actually uh, uh, do not impact any other uh, if you change anything in your uh, area it will not impact with other area in other area right so any uh, changes when happen in your area it's just to notify your connect uh, neighbor i mean the area router so it, it will not share lsa to other area routers so what will it take if you segregate multiple areas or you can divide into the multiple areas actually it will uh, minimize the size of the database as i said when you have big database it will save you incentive uh, to find out the shortest path and it's uh, overhead right so it actually when you divide it into smaller group then it is easier to identify the shortest path right and also any changes restrict with within the area not flooded in the other area or part and the spf only participant within the area not with the other area so it's actually uh, the main things why we are configured the different area so what's the main rule behind when we are uh, segregating uh, the area different area in OSP. main thing uh, if you know or uh, if we don't have any other area there is one area is by default we have to configure that is actually uh, the backbone area and another name is area zero so when you, uh, when we will are uh, divided into other area then 
other area must be connected into the area zero or backbone area and if you need to uh, communicate with other area you ha we have to communicate via backbone area so that's the main uh, rule for me uh, when you are um, configuring the uh, a smaller area in OSPF network another thing just if you see and on left side we have the one area right so if we have one area then area will be the area zero or backbone area if we divide it into it in different uh, smaller area like area one area two and area three area one area two area three and what will happen how actually other area will be connected so these routers those are actually connected to the other area that is called abr area border router that means area border will connect the other area to backbone area if you in here you will find the three abr right abr area border router area border router and area border router and other router is called internal router when the router belongs to the backbone area or area zero and if you think in right uh, just behind right side like uh, other routing domain so when you or uh, some router is uh, configured with eigrp or rip how actually you will uh, distribute this network to OSPF network so when you are connecting with other IGP this router called ASBR autonomous system border router so in this way you can connect the OSPF so we are what we are getting from here we are getting two things like ABR and ASBR and the thing is when we are connecting to others area we have like OSPA or other things from area one to others we have to connect via backbone area we cannot connect area one to others routing domain and we also have to connect other area from area one to area three via backbone area we cannot connect uh, like area one to area uh, two, area two to area three. We can't do that. So this is actually the area terminology when we are working on the um, for, with the area. Then we have to consider these kind of things. Uh, in a uh, link state packets i mean the lsp we have five kinds of packets we normally seen in oscp like uh, hello one of them database database link estate request link estate update and link estate technology what actually uh, the hello we know hello actually used for establishing the neighbor adjacency like if you have a two router r1 and r2 when we need to call adjacency in ospf we have to send the hello packet to each other then they will establish adjacency with each other and many other things uh contain the hello packet we'll discuss this later in dvd as i say dvd means such uh, dvd means data is description it contains all the link state 
how link uh, how the um, when uh, routers any router sending the LSE is actually uh, sending the all the uh, uh, database and other things like uh, what is LSR LSR means when uh, any router sending a request to other neighbor router for uh, more information about network then the packet is called LSR LSU means when you are asking for the LSR in any neighbor router and he's sending you the information then the packet is called LSU link state update also when you're receiving the LSU from your neighbors it's sending acknowledgement the packet is called LSX. That means link state acknowledgement. So in here we are getting five kinds of packet in OSPF. I mean link state packets. One is hello, DVD, link state request, link state update, and link state acknowledgement. Make sense, guys? So we'll discuss more about hello, DVD, and other things in our Later slide. When you have all the LSA in your routers, like uh, if you see the topology in the left side, say R1 have all the LSA in his topology, like from R2, R4, R3. So how actually SPF Pre built in OSP database. See R1 connected to one network that is 10.1.0/24 and to go to this destination the cost is 10. And also from R1 to R2 the cost is 10. And R1 to R3 cost is 10. R2 to R4 cost is 10. R3 to R4 cost is 10 and also for R2 to reach the destination 10.440/24 the cost is 10. When we are uh, for uh, we have to consider from R1 to R4 this destination what will be the cost and what how many paths we have to reach the destination. If you see normally like here you will find two path right one is r1 to r2 and r4 and another one r1 to r4 via r3 right then what will be the cost for reaching from uh, any of this link let's calculate it first c from R1, his cost is 10. From R1 to R4, he'll find 2 tray. From R1, like R1, he has two co two link, right? But he's considering the lowest cost. As said, we be calculating the metric based on cost, and the lowest cost will be the triple path. So if you see from R1 to R4, we have to link the co total cost is 10 plus 10 is equal to 20 for one link another cost for reaching r1 to r4 that is 10 plus 20 is equal to 30 is the cost then which path x actually consider when uh, uh, they will uh, select the base path of course path was right now is if you see in the right side from r1 escape 3 r1 considering for reaching the destination is r2 and r4 in his routing table another one for reaching this network r10333 if you consider this link like 10 10 20 and 40 to reaching this way and this way you will find only 10 cost then this path is the best path for the OSP to reaching this network. So this is uh, the SPF tree for R1, find 
is considering the cost for reaching the destination. And if you check for the R4 is PF3, for R4 to R1 and the network, C, R3 network, C, how actually it will build. Like R4 has his own network that is 10.440/24, and the cost is 10. For R4 to R2, there is cost 10, and for R2 to R1, cost is 10. So this path will be the preferable path because cost is 20. If you take other way, like R4 to R1, if we go by this way, so the cost is 20 plus 10, that is 30. Another one is 10, vice versa. So if you check the R3 network to re, uh, from reaching uh, to R, uh, R4 to R3, like we have two paths. One is this way and other one is this way. So which cost is lowest? This cost is lowest. cost is 20. Another one is also 20, uh, sorry, 30. 10, 10, and 10. Then if you see this path, step three path, you will find the R3 directly and the cost is 20. So in this way, uh, SPF3 is built in his LSDB and uh, find out or uh, to find the shortest path for any destination network. Now, if you uh, check the OSP process uh, for building the neighborship or or exchanging the database with each other, there are mainly seven states. So it's I will discuss one by one. So first take, first one is called down, then in it to a start exchange loading and pull. So if you want to visualize that part, so see this slide like when we didn't configure the escape on R1 and R2, then it stays in down stays. That means we we didn't configure any OSPF, any of our routers, so it stays will be down, right? It's a common thing. But when you configure uh, the OSPF like in R1, then I'm sending the hello packet in the links which I have configured in our OSPF. So what I am telling in R2, I am 192.168.1.10. Why 1.10? I will discuss this later. Who is on the link? And through the multicast address, that is 224.0.0.5. That's the multicast address. So this is the source address and this is the destination address. That means I don't know who is on the link. So I am sending the packet to the multicast group with the source of IP of the highest IP of the router one that is called RID. And against this hello packet, the router tool sending hello against his hello packet. That hello I am 10.0.0.2. Then the packet will be in unicast earlier it was in multicast and now i am getting the information or acknowledgement against the hello packet that is in on anycast and they become neighbors and building their table they not build yet but building their neighbor table and this is stays called is two a stays and when one just initialize the packet for building the neighborship this stage is called init stage or initialize stage so we are getting three stages here one down stage when we didn't configure the OSPF on our router another one is init stage where we just configure OSPF in one router another one is sending or responding against the hello packet and they are when they are becoming the neighbor and building the neighbor table 
that's called the two way stage they just building the neighbor table what actually is the hello packet as i say when they are sending the hello packet the neighbor ship will be established so in hello packet there are lots of field we are we have to consider when we will send the hello packet to each other first one is router id second word is hello and dead interval neighbors area id priority dr ip address pdr ip address authentication password and stub area so what is router id each osp router needs to have a unique id which is the highest ip address on any active interface so when he find the ip address like uh, if we go back to our next uh, previous slide see in here he is using uh, the router id as 192.168.1.100 but why he not taken the ip address of 10.0.0.1 as we know uh, when we are uh, when dynamically router select the router id he select the highest router id of connect interface that is up right so that's why he's selecting 192.168.1.100 so in osp hello packets router id is not mandatory field if that is uh, mandatory means the router id uh, would be unique but it's not mandatory you have the router id for uh, building the neighbor agency but you have to match hello and dead interval with the two neighbors like if you have r1 r2 in r1 hello time is 5 and if you have in r2 hello time is 10 then neighborship will not establish we'll uh, check it more in uh, our lab so neighbors that actually all our routers who are neighbors are specified in the hello packet so when you are sending hello packet to other router you are encapsulating your others neighbor information in your hello packets you just knowing them i have connected to the other router also and area id you have to match when you will configure the osp you have to match the osp area id in both router router priority so router priority this below actually used to determine who will become the designated router or bdr so it's actually used for dr bdr selection and when you are sending the hello packet it also contain the designated router ip and the bdr ip and authentication field used for when you are configuring the password for neighbor agency then this password also going through the hello packet stub area Flags also beside the number of OSPF has different types. Both router have to agree on the same type of stub area flags. If all these things are matching, like the hello dead interval, area ID, and password and stub area flags, then neighbor agency will establish. So this is the hello packet of OSPF area. I already discussed about the OSPF router ID used to identify the router inside the OSPF database and OSPF identify the using the same ID. So uh, in OSPF, uh, so it's not mandatory uh, that your router ID uh, will need to be reachable from other routers. So it's not mandatory. But if you use, uh, if you 
your router ID is reachable from other than you can uh, delete or SSH through the router ID. So, but the thing is you have to consider the router ID when you are configuring uh, the OSPF for, for to identify the routers. So in here, if you see the router ID, you have the three interface that is connected 172.16.0.1, another one 202.15.32.2, another one is 10.0.0.1.10. So what will be the router ID? The highest IP of the interface IP, which is up. So this IP 202.15.32.2 and 2 will be the router ID. But if you have configured the loopback interface IP with the lowest IP address, then the loopback IP will be the router, OSPF router ID. And if you have the two loopback interface, like if, uh, if you configure the two loopback interface, like uh, loopback zero with the 172.16.0.1, another loopback interface 100 with the 10.0.0.1, then uh, it will check the which one is the highest IP address for the router IP. Make sense, guys? So in this way, uh, router ID, is selected and after that when he's uh, exchanging the information like router id as discussed then r1 when neighbor table is built then he'll send the router id with the uh, in r2 and also r2 is sending his router id with r1 that in this stage is called the X state stage. So in this stage, routers are also exchanging his DVD with each other. When all the database are exchanged, then this state is called the X exchange state. Against this exchange stays router acknowledge with the acknowledge packet with each other so we have we found two stages in here one is the extract stage another one is change stage just one thing you have to remember here when you see in your ospf neighborship or in extract stage then you have to check the empty of interface like if you have in one interface empty is 1500 another one is 1400 then your router is OSP route neighborship will be on access state stage so then you have to check whether the MQ of your neighbor and your connected interface are same or not just you have to remember in this stage We skip neighbor table when uh, they are changing the information then they will build first uh, two way stage they will build the neighbor table and when they are exchanging the dvd with each other in exchange stage then they build the database table when they build the database table the best path will be on the routing table so as as you all we, um, we are getting three table here one is neighbor table one is neighbor table another one is routing table another one is database table so neighbor table will uh, just have the neighbor information like if you have the three neighbor then you will have only three or uh, um, neighbor information in neighbor table when you will exchange the route, um, uh, um, routing information or database then you will have the lsdb or link state database in database table that means you have all the lsa of other router if is uh, this router have three uh, lsa that means router information link state information r1 also have the same that means in ospf like uh, if you have four router and r1 
R2, R3, R4. Say if R1 has seven link state, every router will have the seven link state. That means every router has the same LSA. So we'll uh, check it out in later when you will configure the lab. So here we are uh, we are getting three neighbor tables like neighbor table, route table, and database table. So after that, when uh, they are exchanging their uh, information, so router asking say R1 asking R2, I need information about 172.16.0.0 slash 16. So when he's sending this kind of request to R2, this faculty is called LSR as we know, and the stage is called loading stage. It's all also included the update packet information like LSU link state update as we seen earlier. So when R1 requesting to R2, I need information for 16 and R2 sending the information for 16 to R2 via LSU packets. Then he also sending the acknowledge packet all are in the loading space. So if you see uh, your link uh, neighborship stays in loading space, then you have to think this, your router is uh, requesting for some routers in your neighbor. When all the database request done and exchange is done then the uh, neighborship will be in the full space it is the actual space what that we see when we uh, see the neighborship so this is actually the last space that is the full space when all the database is synchronized with each other and they calculate the best for for the destination so this is all or the uh, process when OSPF neighborship is building. So OSPF convergence. What is OSPF convergence? When uh, all the router exchanging their information, they need some time to complete all the things, right? So that is called actually the converse time. So in every 10 second, a OSPF sends the hello packet and it's four time is dead time. That means if you have the hello time or is five, then your dead, uh, the dead time will be the 20 second. So it's four time of hello packet is dead time. And convergence state is 40 second. It's faster than the others starting protocol. So as we said, uh, when um, it's already discussed, uh, we already discussed about the hello packets, which actually uh, contain words, kind of information, right? So before going to that part, How actually OSPF calculating this? We already discussed that uh, that part also. Like uh, when R1 needs to reach the destination that is behind the R5, what will be the uh, best path? As we've seen, the cost of this link for uh, from R1 to R2 is 10 and R2 to R5 is 8. Then the cost will be the for link is 18. and for R1 to R5, this cost will be the 10, and from R2 to R5 by R4 will be the 40. Then wh which one will be the base path? Of course, this one, right? The lowest cost. If you see in the right uh, 
picture like uh, from R1 to R5 via R2, the cost is 5 plus 5 is equal to 10. And R1 to R5 via R3, its cost also same, that is 10. And R1 to R5 by R4, the cost is 10. Then what will happen? Like you have two similar costs, like 10, 10 and 4. In this case, we will do load balancing. When cost will be the same to reaching the destination, we will do the load balance. What's the criteria for load balancing? So you have to the equal cost, first condition, as we said, the OSPF is a load balancing based on the equal cost. And the maximum by default is support for equal cost path. And you can maximize it into 32. And you can also change the cost in your link. So when you need to change the cost, you have to configure it in the interface level. Then you can uh, you can uh, configure as equal cost for all the path. When you need to load balance to the links. So this is the main criteria for load balancing in OSPF. So what actually ne uh, we need when uh, we have uh, we'll configure the OSPF and our neighbor adjacency like before going to the neighborship like how actually we skip uh, we will configure like uh, for OSPF we have to enable the process first we have to configure the OSPF process to enable and the area ID so what the main thing for uh, to configure the OSPF to configure the process for OSPF mostly under the OSPF process but you have to enable the interface in sub mode, like router, OSPF one, one is the process ID, and you have to configure or enable the interface under this sub domain. So OSPF uh, process ID is locally significant. You can configure same process ID in others. Also, you can uh, change the process ID in the others like if you configure the uh, like r1 with the process id one you can configure the process id two in r2 as like if you configure the router id one dot one dot one dot one and one dot uh like you cannot configure one dot one dot one same router id in um, your neighbors like you have to configure the router in different so we can configure uh, the OSPF in two way one is network statement uh, by network statement command like network under the OSPF process and also we can configure the OSPF under the interface like interface first ethernet zero by zero and under that we can configure IP OSPF one then area zero so in this two way we can configure the ospf one is under the one is under the ospf process in the, using the network statement another one is under the ospf interface so we'll check we'll check it in our lab this is the configuration actually uh, as a discuss here like the uh, router ospf process id then the network interface must wildcard mask and for the second method you have to configure the OSPF under the interface like this way and this way so for verification we can use through IP protocols through IP OSPF interface where we said this or discuss this more later so I can skip it so most important thing that we'll uh, check in our lab that is OSPF neighborship so let's bring our laptop here, then we can discuss here. So, okay, I just 
get this side, right? See, if you have a two uh, router, then if you need to configure the OSP, what point neighbor will be established? Like serial one zero one and one zero one. So I'm taking this part. Connect it. First, what uh, we need to remember that when uh, OSP will uh, do adjacency with his neighbor, before that, when we configure what we have to remember that router ID must be unique, as I said. And the interface must share the common subnet, the maximum transmission, uh, transmission that is MTM must match with the link. IP must be on same segment and OSP hello and dead interval must match with each other. So if any of uh, uh, those, uh, any of them are uh, different, then we OSP will not uh, adjust with the membership. So let's see how actually it look like. So if you see, I am configuring the first let me configure with the same IP at the segment like interface CDL one by zero and IP address. Let me write down here first, then it will be better. It will be better to understand the situation. So this is like 192.168.12.0/24, and here is the one dot one and here is the dot two. So, like IP address one eighty two one six eight. Once, sorry, one six eight one two dot one to fifty five to fifty five dot zero. No shut. Okay, first I am configuring only the IP address, and also here R five. Quantity interface serial one by zero IP address one ninety two one six eight one two dot two two fifty five two fifty five dot zero no shut. So before configuring the OSPF, we have to make sure we are our our neighbor is reachable. So to check the reachability, we will use the ping command. So one ninety two one six eight one two dot to from R5. So we are getting the ping response, that means it's reachable. So now let's see when we are configuring the OSP on R4. So I am configure um, one router will configure in under the OSP process, another one will be con will configure under the interface. So first one in R4, I will configure it under the OSPF process, router OSPF one, and the network will be the interface IP. Interface IP is 192.168.12.1 and the port four, wildcard mask. Sorry, I have to mention the area. So area will be the zero. So I just enabling uh, the OSPF on uh, for the interface is one by zero now see how actually we skip packet look like start capturing we can check it out on also router also so if you configure the debug command here like do debug OSPF hello then you'll find the OSP hello packet in your terminal. So first we can see here, like uh, EJRP, we can see the source IP address is router IP, that is 192.168.12.1, and uh, 224.0.5 is the multicast. 
we just sending the hello packet for every in every five second right it's so for every five uh, 10 seconds sorry in every 10 second we are sending the hello packet so if you see the details on the OSCAP part like uh, what is the source ip is 12.1 the destination ip is 224.0 slash 24 and the destination ip here also and osp part you can find the others information like uh, what is the router priority priority is one and the hello interval is 10 as i said every 10 second is sending the hello packet and dead interval is four, four times of hello that is 40 and with, there is no odr vdr selection in here because the uh, the link is point to point so dr router ip is zero and backup router i is zero and here you will find the area area or quad zero means the area is zero and which is called the backbone area so who is sending the hello packet uh, 192 is sending the hello packet so the hello packet of the EHRP, oh sorry, OSP is look like. So go on. So I just configuring uh, the OSP winter is here. And after that, when I will configure the OSP, uh, the interface, serial. Okay, I am on the interface. I have to configure IP OSP one area zero so when i uh, will put this in uh, command in the interface it will start the process ipo in global mode if you check show run section router ospf you'll find the only one command that is router ospf it means he just started the process of ospf with the process id one and if you uh, if we check the neighborship right now, so how it look like show IP OSP neighbor, then you will find it full cause it's already others stage is cause. So what we are uh, what we are getting here first one is the neighbor ID that is the router ID of the neighbor and the stage is full and dead timer 31 if you check the date timer changing right because it's four time when he's getting the again hello packets the time is resetting and this address is the neighbor or address that is connected interface ip and this is the serial interface where it's connected so this is the neighborship now see if we change what i say router id has to be unique on both router right so if our router id has to be unique on both router then we have to configure the first router id like uh, in ospf like router ospf1 then router id like 4.4.4 is the router id of router 4 if you configure the uh, the router id before now after our neighbor or adjacency then we have to clear the ospf process to change the router id because neighbor agency already happened in other side first let configure the router id in router 5 also so if we configure the ospf under the interface but in the, uh, that scenario we Sorry, have no, to no, 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 no yes sir. uh probably uh, share screen off or something some problem because uh, some uh, participant complained that please share your screen is there any oh, issue oh yeah. uh, no you are getting my screen or not are you getting hello i can so see, see your i can see your share uh, screen okay so let me uh, first stop the sharing then i will start it's it okay now someone said it's okay now but i can okay 
Uh, maybe uh, there is a um, lag in uh, the home network. So it could be. So uh, we are in same stage. So that means uh, now is it okay? Hmm? Are you seeing okay. my screen right now? Sir, to packet bana. Sir, for Eric Tosh. Sir. Okay. Eric to packet bana. Sir, you are getting. Yes. Sorry. You are yes, getting. Yes, right? now I can. Okay. Okay. Uh, so uh, we are in interface mode, but uh, if we have to configure the router ID, then we have to go in the OSPF process. So router OSPF one then we can configure the router id so for router 5 i'm configuring the router id same here clear osp to change the router id clear ip osp osp process yes So if we uh, if we check the router ID now, like uh, show IP protocol, see the router ID is 5.5.5, .5 and here show IP protocol. The router ID is 192.168.12.1. Why? Because we didn't clear the OSP process in R4. So here we have to clear the OSP process again. IP OSP process, then yes. If we check the router ID again, then you will uh, we'll get the router ID for here. So the condition is router ID would not be same. So let's configure the router ID 5 in R4, then see what will happen. So router, we have to go under the OSP process, router OSP1 and the router ID as same as router 5, 5.5.5. .5 and if we clear IP OSP process, See what happened. See, you are, uh, when we are changing the um, uh, router ID, I mean, uh, we configure the same router ID in uh, two router. The first, the urgency is down because the process is clear. After that, we are getting a duplicate router ID message. That means dupe uh, RTR ID. That means duplicate router ID. OSP is detected duplicate router ID 5.5 .5 from 192.168.12.2 on interface. That means if the neighbor urgency will not establish. So if we check the neighborship, show I OSP neighbor, neighbor. So see, there is no neighbor adjacency. So this is the first condition. We have to match the um, uh, we have to defend router ID on our neighbors. So let's change the router ID again. Router OSP one and the router ID is as previous 4.4.4. .4 and if you clear the OSP one. process now you will see the neighbor agency show ip ospf neighbor see. so first condition we applied the we have uh, the neighbor for building the neighbor agency router id must be unique in between two devices then another thing that we have uh, we are in the same subnet right if we check the ip interface show ip interface brief the ip of router 4 is 192.168.12.1 and another one 
is also in same subject like show interface brief it's all are in same subject right one is one another one is two so it's also another criteria for establishing the neighbor agency another one is mto as i said earlier let configure the mto so if we check the serial inter going to the serial one by zero and set the mto for the in, like uh, first we see the mto of this interface show interface serial one by zero for checking the mto if you check the mto in here like 1500 is the mto for serial one by zero so mto means maximum transmission need and it how much uh, packet will transmit at a time or per second on this thing so if we now change the mto on r4 we have to go under the serial interface serial one by zero and mto is 1400 now see the result show clear ipos pf process so if we check the neighborship show ipos pf neighbor as i said when the issue is related to the mt you will find the access start stage so earlier it was in full right if we earlier it was in full so if we check the interface empty right um, on the serial one by zero show interface serial one by zero if you will find the empty is 1400 and other side show interface serial one by zero you will get the 1500 so different empty in our uh, two neighbors that's why neighbor ship not established yet right so if for uh, this is the other criteria for neighbor adjacency so if we again change the neighbor um, uh, i mean mto on the interface serial one by zero command is mto and the mto is 1500 now if you see the neighbor table show ipo spf neighbor you will get the neighborship so this is another criteria so another thing i as i said mandatory field is did and hello interval on the ospf i will check that so if you check that hello and dead interval show ip ospf interface serial one by zero you will find the hello is 10 and dead time is 40 or time is 40. if you check the other router same things like show ipospf interface serial one by zero you'll find the same thing that's why you are getting the neighborship but when you are you will change the and uh, i mean the hello interval or dead interval on interface then neighborship will be dropped so how can we change that like if we configure on r5 for this interface then we have to go under the interface serial one by zero and to configure the hello interval command is ip ospf hello and the interval like uh, now it's 10 we are reducing at five if we change the hello interval on interval serial one by zero so if we check the show ipospf interface serial one by zero you will find it's four time dead interval so we have saying uh change hello 10 to 5 and dead interval on automatically change and it is four time and also the waiting time if you all just scroll up the hello earlier hello time was 10 and the date time was 40 
and now if you check that adjacency in the neighbor table it's got down so ipo escape neighbors just because of hello interval right so if we change same thing on the router four interface serial one by zero and the ip ospf hello is five then you will find the OSP neighbors agency will occur again so then show ip ospf neighbor table it's come up again so this is actually the mandatory field we have to check when we will configure by default if you are you you have to just enable the network and in on the under the OSP process or under the interface level but when you are uh, getting error in some point in some stage then you have to uh, check one by one but when you are checking the neighbor uh, agency with your routers you are not getting the agency neighborship uh, are not building with the routers then you have to check one by one what is the condition so major uh, as i said major things uh, is the router id must uh, be unique in between in two devices and they must be shared the common subnet the interface maximum transmission uh, unit that is mto must match the area id must match for the segment then uh, if uh, uh, the node i mean the router in multi access network like uh, you have a uh, four uh, router connected to um, in a switch and they are uh, sharing the same subnet then the dr and vdr ip must be matched in between two routers for establishing the neighbor and also hello and did interval must be matched in between two routers so that's uh, the main things when we are configured the OSP, would it, uh, would it, uh, if we would and change anything then it's automatically come up we don't need to change anything right but when if you see like uh, earlier uh, someone configured the mpu size is uh, 9000 or 1400 then you have to check why um in which uh, link you are getting uh, the OSP change then you have to change it uh we have to configure the spa in equal in same path so as i said record for agency all the those things have to be matched and a uh, dear dear concept as i said just Just doing it. So, uh, in our dear video, our selection, like the uh, when uh, you or a router belongs to a multi access network, look like this. Uh, like the r1 not r1 uh, all the routers all are connected in multi-access network that means all the routers connected into the switch and then uh, uh, they are establishing the neighbor agency in OSP. i mean the OSP is enabled on this network then there will be will be a dear video selection so in multi-access networks such as like ethernet frame uh, if two uh, router exist on the same router more than two on it uh, more than two routers exist on the same network then our dear video selection process will occur so uh, as i said when dear video selection is done so we don't need to send all the lsa to all the routers we will just send the lsa to to the dear router and the dear router will send the update to the other other router so how actually thing will happen let's see in 
here. So when a uh, multi-access in multi-access network, like all the routers connected to switch, then the neighbor adjusts will uh, establish in with other routers by default. If you don't um, uh, select the DR BDR selection, when you will select the DR or BDR, then what actually uh, uh, network will do? I mean, OSP will do. You will just declare DR as a node. So, in pseudo node yes. means the DR router. So this router okay, and this router are actually the same. Then our pseudo node will say uh, send the packet to other router. I mean the DR other router. So DR other uh, DR other means one router is DR, other another router is BDR, and all other router called is DR other. So if you see in a uh, lower left side slide uh, image like a DR IP is 192.168.10.10 and the BDR IP is 192.168.9.1 so DR other like uh, um, IP 192.168.1.1 is sending the LSA to it's a growing DR. pattern Monikaro, I can I can. sir your mic is on so another uh, Thing when uh, the DR receiving the LSA from R1, what he will do? He will actually send the acknowledge band to the DR other in in it just way, not the broadcast, right? But he will when he will sending the information that is he uh, he will getting from the R1, then DR will send information to others. I mean, he will exchange the DVD with the others. So in this way, DRBDR process is happen in OSBM. So this, when we are selecting the DR and BDR, there is some criteria who will be the DR, who will be the BDR. So when uh, the router, like uh, if you have the four routers, say R1, R2, R3, R4 and they are connected to switch. Who will be the RDR? What is the criteria for selecting the DR and BDR? So there is uh, the two way the OSP, uh, OSP can um, select the DR and BDR. First is the OSP uh, priority. So, highest priority. So it is the first criteria and second one is the highest OSP router ID. Highest OSP RID. So first uh, you will check the OSP priority. By default, all the, the router has the OSP priority is one. So if all router has the same ID, ID then you will check the other condition. Who's router ID is the highest. So if you think of uh, this router ID is 1.1.1.1 and this is 2.2.2.2 and this is 3.3.3.3 and this is 4.4.4.4 who will be the DR? Of course, 4 will be the DR. So when a uh, uh, sele uh, DR selection is done, after that, Again, you select the BDR. So BDR selection is the same process. First, you will check the highest priority. If the priority highest uh, priority is tied, then uh, you check the highest OSP router ID. So then if you check this scenario, who will be the BDR? The router three, I mean, this will be the BDR. BDR and all other router is called DR other DR other. So in this uh, way, uh, the DR uh, selection process is done in a network. Uh, so I am not going to describe more in this way. So I just uh, 
letting you for selecting like uh, say if you want to change the drb date selection in manually like uh, you want to uh, see the dr is the router one and r2 is the uh, uh, bdr then how we will uh, consider uh, configure this one then you have to change the priority of the router so if you want to change this way then you have to configure all the uh, all other router priority is zero and the highest r1 priority will be configured as uh, 100 or any other value that's for selecting uh, as a dr and on r2 it will be at 50 or lower from the r1 if you configure menu uh, manually on interface then uh, r1 will be the dr and r2 will be the bdr so in this way you can uh, change the dr or bdr selection and when we, uh, we can do that like uh, if you see the some router has a small uh, lower configuration and some router has uh, the better uh, configuration then you can change this way right so this is the dr bdr selection process and this process dr i already said on uh, the issue when uh, that in a uh, tour uh, neighborship agency in, in two way like uh, first as i said first down right second in it and after that two way so when drbdr ip will exchange after two way the drbdr ip selection process occurred so it's before the x start that means before sending the lsdb the dr bdr selection process will happen so if you think uh, something wrong on dr bdr selection or neighborhood then you have to uh, check uh, by your own in osp interface so uh, when we configure the uh, osp in our, our network like uh, if you have uh, like uh, if you see in our router so how actually the database look like if you see show ip ospf database you see you have a two ospf link id and it's called the link router link states so there are many of the link states you will have in osp so first that so actually we will have uh, one to eleven type of lsa so by naming or uh, it's uh, one is router another one is network net summary sbr summary as external group membership so it's very important to understand what is the router id what is um, i mean what is the lsa1 lsa2 lsa3 lsa4 lsa5 lsa6 so um, commonly in uh, our OSPF net um, network we see few um, lsa type like lsa type 1 lsa type 2 3 4 5 lsa so commonly we um, in our uh, voice pip network we seen this type of lsa others uh, is uh, for uh, other um, i mean for the membership area and ssh external it is not uh, commonly used in ospf network so how actually uh, identify uh, the router lsa or how actually identify the network lsa net summary when we'll uh, see the asbr summary or net summary of external asa so that's the main thing in ospf you have to understand for double sharing or any purpose so before uh, checking that uh, just i uh, configuring one route right just to let's say i'm taking okay
Okay. So if you see uh, in this OSPF topology, you, will have, you can see the three routers like R1, R2, and R3. So what will happen actually? Uh, when we'll see the LSA type one, when we'll see the LSA type two, when we'll see the LSA type three, and four and five. So the, uh, that's the main thing we have to understand when we uh, manage the OSPF based network. So when you configure a uh, a um, one area you uh, you don't have any other area and you don't have any um asbr uh, autonomous system border router then you will have only one lsa that is called lsa type one and that is called router lsa so router lsa means you have uh, you are just configuring the wastecape in one area and the interface that is connected to oh, this area will into oh, this OSA LSA type. So if we configure that part, we have to understand what actually in R1, if we configure the like R1, R2, R3 OSA process, then how LSA link look like. So before going into that part, we have to configure R1, R2, R3. Let me configure it quickly so that we can visualize how actually uh, LSA type and how actually uh, uh, link state five or others uh, LSA look like. So I'm just configuring. Okay, before configuring that, uh, putting the IP address here. So this IP will be 10.1.2.0 slash 24. And this will be 10.1.0.0 slash 24. And that will be 10.1.3.0 slash 24. This network will be 10.2.0.0 slash 24. And this will be 10. 3.0.0 slash 24. Okay, this is our network. Now, uh, in R1, all the IP will be 1. In R2, all the IP will be 2. In R3, all the IP will be 3. Let's configure it. So uh, we are going to configure the interface IP and OSP on R1. So first we have to configure the interface IP interface. You see the interface. Interface serial one by zero is connected to R2. The IP address will be 10.1.2.1 .1 to 55 to 55 to 55.0. No shirt. If we configure OSPA, okay, we'll configure under the OSPA process. Then interface serial one by one. IP address will be 10.1.3.1 and the subnet mask is slash 24, no shirt. And also the interface first Ethernet zero by zero. IP address will be 10.1.0.1 to 55 to 55 to 55.0, no shirt. If we want to check the interface IP, show IP interface creep. So I am in interface configuration mode or configuration mode, then I have to use the do. So if we check the interface IP, all are set and the link is up. One interface is down, two interfaces down because the other side in down state. So if you configure the OSPF, we have to configure out our OSPF. The command and the process is one. The network IP will be the interface IP. One is 10.1.2.1 and the wildcard mask is quad four, uh, quad zero and the area is zero. 
another IP is 10.1.3.1 and same and another IP is 10.0.1.0.1 so our uh, router one configuration is done and In R2 interface, serial 1 by 0, IP address is 10.1.2.1 and subnet must be 255.255.0. No shirt, interface serial 1 by 2, IP address will be 10.1.2.3, uh, like IP address is 10.2.3.2. And the subnet mask is 255 to 55 to 55.0. No shut. We have configured the serial interface with the wrong IP. So serial 1 by 0 and IP address will be 10.1.2.2. Then we have to configure the serial first Ethernet 0 by 0. IP address 10.2.0.2 to 55 to 55 to 55.0. No shut. So if we check the interface configuration, do show IP interface brief. See all the IP interfaces 2 and 10.2.1.2, 10.2.3. If you want to configure the OSPF, then we have to go configure the router OSPF one and the network. Network is like 10 to 0 .0 .0 .0 .0 .0 0 0.0.0.0 area 0. And also the network is this one and the mask is multicut mask is quad 0 and the area is 0. And also for this network, network is this one, and the mask is core zero and area is done. So we have configured on R2, and last one we have to configure on R3. So in R3, same thing. So we have to configure the interface first. Interface serial one by one. IP address is 10.1.3.3 .3 to 55 to 55 to 55.0. No shirt. Interface serial one by two, I think. IP address is 10.1.10.2.3 10 to 55 to 55 to 55.0. No shirt. Interface first Ethernet 0 by 0. IP address will be 10.3.0.3 .3 .0 .3 to 55 to 55.0. 55 no shut then router ospf1 network 10.1.3.3 oil card mask is square zero and the area is zero also same for the up to side network 10.2.3.3 and the oil card mask is 0.0.0.0 .0 .0 .0 .0 area zero and for the LAN site network is 10.3.0.3 and the wildcard mask is quads zero and area is zero if everything well then we'll have the two neighborship one is with R1 another one is with R2 so show IP OSPF neighbor 
as you can see we have two neighbor and here we are getting to one so we didn't configure the router id that's why uh, i think So uh, that's why we are getting the highest IP of the interface. So if we change it, router OSPA1, then the router ID, like three for the router three, we will configure the three, then clear IP OSPA process. Yes, and for R1, same if you change the router id router ospf one step one the router id will be 1.1.1 as i said uh, the router id don't need to be uh, reachable from each other but we can do that clear ip ospf process r1 and also in r2. router ospf1 router id is 2.2.2.2 and clear ip ospf process and set. so on uh, if we check now the ospf table show ip ospf neighbor table you will find two neighbor one is router one another one is router three that's okay right so but uh what we have uh, how i actually will uh, check the uh, database table as i said when you have a three router you will have the cl side right so if we check on the show ip ospf database like you have the three router you will have the three lsa one so this is actually the lsa one or router lsa and each from each one on of the lsa will get another more things so what will get from this lsa if we check in the right side see from r1 we'll um we already get uh, the uh, five link count and from the router two will have the five lsa and from the three will have the five lsa what what lsa will get from the r1 and r2 let's check this out so see if if you see the topology r1 is connected to r2 r1 is connected to r3 this is the point to point when ospf sees this is point to point connected this network is called the stub network just remember this one this is the stub network so when this is the point to point this will consider as a stub network and also this is is the stub network so when we'll check the lsa we'll find on r r1 the three stub network one is 10.1.0 slash 24 and another one is 10. 2.0/24 another node is 10.3.0/0 let me write down 10. will have 10.1.0.0/24 what actually the ls contains so we'll have 10.1.0/24 is the network and we'll also have the cost the cost is the link cost that is the this one cost if it is the first ethernet the cost will be the one and as i said uh, in ospf it's called the stub network so we'll have as a stub and for this network 10.1.2.0 10 24 will have the same things we'll have the cost for this link uh, if we check the uh, in, uh, serial cost, it will be 64 by default. And it's also the stub network. And also 
for same for the 10.1.3.0 slash 24 the cost will be 64 and it is the stub network beside this what actually we say uh, in uh, lsa contain that is the for our neighbor information so how actually it will be look like like uh, the interface ip interface ip means your interface ip router one interface ip what is the router interface ip router interface ip is 10.1.2.1 and through this interface you will getting your neighbor what is the neighbor ip through this link the router id of the neighbor is r 2.2.2.2 and through another link the interface ip is 10.1.3.1 that is on serial one by one interface and through this link you will have another neighbor that is 3.3.3.3 so these five lsa information you will find in your uh, r1 lsa and also same information you will have in your r2 so what will be the lsa look like in r2 like for 10.2.0 same cost is one and it will be the stub and for 10.1.2.0 it will be this uh, stub network and cost is 64 and for 10. dot two dot three dot zero slash contributors will be also the 64 and the interface ip will be 10.1.2.2 and the router id will be 1.1.1 and another neighbor is three okay but the interface ip will be connected interface ip 10.2.3.3 so this five connection you will have in your uh, lsa one and also how will we look like in r3 same things you will find we will check that so 10.3.0.0 slash 24 the cost will be one and 10.1.3.0 slash 24 the cost will be 64 as the link is serial and 10.2.3.0 slash 24 it will be the 64 as the link is serial and interface ip that is connected to the neighbor is 10.1.3.3 router id on and the 10.2.3.3 will be 2.2.2.2 here we here the interface ip will be actually 2 so actually what we are getting we are get, um, we are just um, we have this lsa we will share this lsa to others like we have uh, uh, this lsa i mean three networks that's called the stub network and we have uh, we are connected to, to our neighbors one is r1 and another we are just letting all uh, the lsa to other routers when all the routers have the same lsa then it's called the adjacency so if we check on r1 like from r1 lsa so how we'll check that show ip ospf database the on this called lsa1 is called router lsa and which lsa you want to check i want to check the r1 lsa then the in link id of the router one so if you check uh, one by one like uh, as we write down in here in r1 c 
see how many links we have we have five links one two three four five what is the link state id that is one and the what is the setting router that is r1 so we are taking the r1 so firstly first step that is connected network that is 10.1.0 slash 24 10.1.0 slash 24 and the metric is one that is the cost as i written and it is this is the stub network as i written earlier another one is point to point that is connected into uh, in neighbor is 10.3.3 and the interface ip is 10.1.3.1 and the cost for this network is 64 as it is the serial and also we have the same network 10.1.3 10.1.3.0 slash 24 and the metric is 64 means cost is 64 and the subject marks is slash 24 and if you check the other one the point to point that is connected to neighbor or router 2.2.2 router rid is 2.2.2 and the interface that is connected to it with the router 2 that is 10.1.2.1 10.1.2.1 and also for this link cost is 64 because we have that network already 10.1.2.0 10.1.2.0 cost is 64 and the subject so if it I check the LSA, we will have all the LSA in R1, R2, and R3. So, if we check the R2 LSA, we will have the same things as we written here. So, you find for 5 and you will check that is the stub network 2, that is for the connected for 1.1, that is for connected to R3, that is for the 1.2, that is for the stub network. So, we have the 5 links. So, if we check from the R2 R1 LSA show IP OSTF database router for R1, you will find all the things in here also. We have the five. So all the router have the same LSA, all the router have the same router information. So this type LSA is called the router LSA. That means how if if you have the Five router, you will have the five LSA type one. Show IP OSPF neighbor. Sorry, show IP OSPF database. So if uh, as you see here, right, we you, uh, we have the three router, then we are getting the three LSA type one. If you we have the five LS uh, five router in our network, then we will find the five LSA one here, and all the router will exchange his LSA to other router that we are already checked in here, right? So this is called the router LSA. So another is the first LSA will uh, be in uh, OSPF area but after that if your uh, network is connected to multi-access network that means it's like uh, in between router 2 and router 3 is a switch you are connected to another router this like say oh uh, this is a switch If you think this is a switch and this uh, is another router, all are in multi-access network, then this network is look like a DRB DR selection, right? So it is a multi-access network. Then you will get the LSA type two. LSA type two. When you have connected with the other area. like uh, you are connect this is area zero and this router is connected to area one so this router is called abr 
then you will get the LSA type 3. That means all the ABR is uh, uh, publishing the LSA type 3 to other area. So in area 0, you will find this network under this router, then you will find as a LSA type 3. So when your uh, like your uh, R1 is connected to another area that is with the other routing protocol like EAGRP, and you are uh, redistributing this network into the OSP, then you will have the LSA type five. And where is the LSA type four? LSA type 4 is required when you are exchanging this type of uh, LSA 5 into the ABR, then it will just know about, it will not advertise the LSA type 1 to MC, right? Uh, this router. Then, how uh, this router will know about this network? That means the next of address. For knowing this, uh, Next up, the R2 that is the area border router will pushing another type of SA that is called LSA type 4. So, in our, our common, no, we protocol, need to finish. Yeah, I just finishing, sir. Okay, I thought so uh, okay, okay. Uh, so, in our waste paper, we will have just uh, commonly seen the LSA type 1, 2, 3. 4 and 5, this 4 and 5. So other uh, OLSA type will be uh, used in different cases. So if you check that, you can all check your by your own. So uh, that's all about our tourist class. If you have any queries in uh, a tourist lesson, you can raise your hand. Uh, so your mic will be open. Okay. Thank you, guys. Okay, if you have any question, you can raise your hand. Uh, Faisal, I think you can share the link. Or if anyone have any question, you can raise your hand. Question answer box is available. Assessment already shared, Abdul Rahman. Uh, you can also check your uh, safe network and also the uh, chat box. So do you have any question? Uh, I got a question from someone. He's asking why cost is 64. It's the default 64. cost for serial. Uh, uh, it's the default cost for serial link. The for the uh, in OSPF, if you um, your neighbor is connected to the serial, then cost will be the 64. It, if it will be the first Ethernet, the cost will be one. So it's a default cost. Okay. Do you have any other question? Mm, I think no one have question. Okay, okay. I think uh, thank you, Nozrul, for your uh, nice lecture and also informative lecture about the OSPF. I think uh, you can, uh, dear uh, participant, you can also watch this uh, video lecture and practice uh, from our website. Okay, I think thank you, Nozrul. Okay, sir, I'm leaving. Thank you, guys. Thanks okay. for joining. Okay, thank you very okay. much. See you.